Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Santa520, and welcome to my new LP of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. This game was originally released in 1993 for the Game Boy, and then again in 1998 for the Game Boy Color in its DX incarnation. So, without further ado, I have a file set up here. Toss it and turn it in our bed. Blink, blink. What a relief. I thought you'd never wake up. You were tossing and turning. What? Zelda? No, my name's Marin. You must still be feeling a little woozy. You were on Koholint Island. Are we now? Well, Link, you finally snapped out of it. Name's Taryn. Hope you're feeling better. What? How did I know your name? You think it's weird, eh? Well, I saw it on the back of this shield. Oh. You got your shield back. Press the button and repel enemies with it. Cool. Oh yeah, some other stuff like this washed up on the beach. If and you go look for, look for, look, watch out for the monsters. Ever since you showed up, Link, I've seen them all over the place. Follow the lane south to reach the beach where I found you. Since you washed ashore, lots of nasty monsters have been in the area. So be careful, okay? Will do, Marin. So, I have a bit of an odd relationship with this game. Uh, back in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, or late 90s, early 2000s, there was an emulator online, and it had a number of games pre-available for it, and they were the only games you could play on it. Um, there was Bomberman Adventure, there was Alfred Chicken, and then there was Link's Awakening. Huh? A keyhole here? It says, Tail Keyhole. So, the first... This was my first time getting to play... That was... Or, that was my first time getting to play Link's Awakening. Uh... Because I had never seen it before. I had seen... And you might notice this if you've played later games. You might notice that this game has a odd similarity to Capcom's uh, da, 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 Oracle games. Beware of sea urchins. Don't touch them with your bare hands. Okay. But, uh, where was I? Oh, right. Excuse me? <laughs> okay, so don't touch them with your bare hands. Excuse me. Don't touch them with your bare hands. You can, however, push them around with your shield. Hoot, hoot. So you were the lad who owns the sword. Now I understand why the monsters are starting to act so violently. A courageous lad has come to wake the windfish. It is said that you cannot leave the island unless you wake the windfish. You should now go north to the mysterious forest. I will wait for you there. Hoot. So anyway, the, uh, you found your sword. It must be yours because it has your name engraved on it. The, uh, the emulator on the internet did not... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the emulator online did not have sound, so I didn't understand why I was stuck uh, holding my sword up in the air for a while. Um, so we've got a sword, collect some rupees. Um, but I got to about this point and couldn't get any further. Because when, you, when we come into the mysterious forest, we run into a character who will not let us pass. First, let's drop this bush. 
Did that just drop two hearts? Anyway, jump down this hole and we've got a piece of heart! Press select on the subscreen to see. So if we open our subscreen, you can see we've got all these items here. And we can switch them out. Switch that like that. Now we press select, you can see we have a green tunic, one out of four pieces of heart, and zero out of 12 photographs. I'm getting discombobulated here. What was I saying? Also, we got a chain chomp here for reasons. Lady down here sweeping. Around the game, you'll find these phone booths. You can go in here and talk. Bring, bring! Hello, it's me, Ulriva. Ask me anything about the island. If you get lost, give me a call. Bye! Click. Yes, around the island are these little phone booths, and you can go in and talk to Ulrira to get a hint about where you're supposed to go next. Hey man, when you want to save, just push all the buttons at once. Uh, don't ask me what that means. I'm just a kid. So yeah, uh, the, the way you save in this game is really bizarre. You have to press A, B, Start, and Select at the exact same time, and it'll bring you to this menu. <laughs> well, it seems after you save, you'll start at the last door you went through. I'm not really sure why that is, because I'm just a kid. Thanks. Um, got some bushes here, chop them through, and... You found a secret seashell! If you collect a lot of these, something good is bound to happen. And there was a fairy there for a split second. We've got another shop here. And here we can buy a shield for 20 rupees. We can buy three hearts for 10. Or we can buy a shovel for 200. Got to need to save up money for that. Because they all look alike, even I am sometimes confused. By the way, my baby wants a Yoshi doll. I saw one at the Trendy game, but I couldn't get it. So all the boys that are in the town are... Hers and this, this guy right here. Yep, those are my boys. I'm Papal, pleased to meet you. I'll be lost in the hills later, so keep a lookout for me, here. Okay. We got. Here sleeps the flying rooster. Hi, Terran went to the forest to look for toadstools, but I'd rather sing. Listen to this. It's called the Ballad of the Windfish. That's a nice song. Uh, this is Taryn and Mar uh, Marin and Taryn's house. And then we've got Chain Chompy here. And... Ho ho ho! My Bow Wow is so proud of his fine fur coat. Fur coat! Fur... Coat. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say, lady. Mysterious forest. It's a little bit mysterious. Woot! Ho, oh, brave lad, on your way quest to wake the dreamer. Welcome to the mysterious wood. Much of mystery you will find on this uncharted Covalent Island. I'm afraid you may find it a trifle difficult to leave the island while the windfish naps. By the by, have you ever visited the Tail Cave, which is south of the village? Go there with the key you find in this forest. The Windfish is watching. Oot. So this is the part that I got stuck on. 
I couldn't figure out for the life of me what to do in this forest. Now, it looks pretty straightforward. We got moblins. We got moblins. And then we got this guy. As a raccoon, my nose is very sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. Well, if we keep going, he starts to laugh, and... <laughs> You're going to be lost, thanks to me. <laughs> and now... We get teleported to a random spot in the woods. So, what we're supposed to do to get rid of this guy, and something I never found out as a youngin, is to come in here, first of all. Let's take care of these keys. These uh, cracked floors will crack and crumble away if you stand on them too long. And use your sword to smash up these... Uh... Oh, for goodness sake. You smash up the crystals with your sword. And you can push these turtle rocks. And in here, we got 50 rupees! Very nice! some souls here. Excuse me. And then we got more turtle rocks here, and then there's a piece of heart over there behind these skulls. Now try as you might, you're not going to be able to get this. Because this turtle rock don't move. And this turtle rock that doesn't do much. But I came over here and I found this guy. You pick the toadstool. As you hold it over your head, a mellow aroma flows into your nostrils. Okay, so we got a toadstool. And over there's a chest. And if you see, on the map, well you can't really see it, but right here is where the raccoon is. So that's one screen above where the raccoon is. So we have to figure out some way to get rid of that raccoon. However, I never figured this out as a kid. Because what you're supposed to do is first of all kill these keys and grab their rupees, because bats have money. Okay, this... You got a piece of power! You can feel the energy flowing through you! Piece of power! Special item! Let's you run faster, or move faster, and it gives you double attack and has that weird effect where you, like, literally knock enemies across the room. However, you can't keep it if you go through a door. And that guy's got a sword. So anyway, um, if I was low on hearts, there would be a great fairy here. So my initial thought was, oh, I have to take the toadstool to the raccoon. Also, there's that chest again. But if you take the toadstool to the raccoon, nothing happens. So what you're actually supposed to do, is you're supposed to leave the forest. And here's another heart piece. And then there's this thing, which is a... Buzz Blob. Buzz Blobs don't hit them with your sword, or they will do damage to you because they're electrified. And this asshole over here is a Zola. Or River Zora. Anyway, you're supposed to take the toadstool over here and take it into this tree. There's a rat in here. And then there's here, this lady. Double, double, talent trouble. A toadstool mix makes powder for tricks. So what you're supposed to do is you're actually supposed to give the toadstool to this lady. Ah, it has the sleepy toadstool it does. We'll mix it up something in a jiffy we will. And then speed racer. It's already it is. Take care, as there's not much there. Why not try a bit in my hut? And we've get, we've get. You've got some magic powder. Try sprinkling it on a variety of things. So, we can 
Do that. Good job. Use it on your enemies and see what happens. If you run out, go to the forest, pick some mushrooms, and I will make you more. So the magic powder has a variety of effects, depending on what you decide to use it on. Such as Mr. Blubblob here. We'll turn him into Cukeman. Amon! You know me. I like short names the best. It can display millions of polygons. Uh, can it now? I definitely need it, as soon as possible. Amon! Okay, enough of that. He'll... I think he still, like, electrifies you. And if you use it on, like, just a regular enemy, uh, that happens. And it kills the enemy instantly. I need to be careful, because I do not want to die. Because, believe it or not, there's actually multiple endings to this game. Depending on if you die during the course of the game or not. So, I don't want to die. I'm gonna deal with this guy, though. Uh, we've got a, we got the sword spin, so that should help. Oh, for fuck's sake. Wow, this looks pretty heavy! You won't be able to lift it with just your bare hands! Yes, uh, these rocks, anything you can pick up with a later item, will display that message if you touch it. But here's this fairy I was talking about, so... Let's heal your wounds and get rid of all that stress. Close your eyes and relax. And we're healed. They are all over the place, these fairies, but you won't be able to know where they're at until you actually need them. But now that we've got the magic powder, let's go visit this raccoon. Because he said he's very sensitive to dust. Well... And technically, this isn't actually a raccoon. It's a tanuki. What? The last thing I can remember was biting into a big juicy toadstool. Then I had that darndest dream. I was a raccoon. Yeah, it sounds strange, but it sure was fun. Taryn. But at least now, we can get to this chest. And inside is the tail key. Now you can open the tail cave gate. And here comes Exposition Owl. Hoot! Take the key and go to the tail cave. Retrieve the instrument that is hidden there. Go now. The windfish is waiting. Hoot! Okay. And Terran went home, I guess. Luckily. Oh, okay. You've got a Guardian Acorn. It will reduce the damage you take by half. So yes, uh, the, this is the counterpart to the piece of power. Instead of doubling our attack, the Guardian Acorn will reduce the damage we take by half for a while. It loses its effect if we leave or go through a door. But even though the music has changed here, it's still in effect. So if I go up to here, it'll come back. So, we're going to come over here and head back to that tail cave. Or the tail keyhole. Which was dispelled. Grab more rupees. And now, we can unlock this door. And enter the first dungeon. Level 1. Tail cave. So we've got two gels, and up here we've got a new enemy, the Hard Hat Beetle. He is impervious to damage, but you can knock him into a hole to get rid of him. And now we've got our first small key. Here we've got some Stalfos. Excuse me. The Stalfos will try to jump away from you, but there's not really any... 
even though it looks like there is, there isn't actually any height. At last, you got a map. Press the start button to look at it. There isn't the illusion of height. They look like they're jumping, but they're really just tra uh, moving along a single axis. So you can still hit them, even when they're... Um, even when they're in the air. You've got the compass. Now you can see where the chests and nightmare are hidden. This compass has a new feature. A tone will tell you if a key is hidden in a room when you enter. So yes, big upgrade from the Link to the Past compass. Not only will it tell you where the chests are, excuse me, it will also tell you when there's a key in the room. So let's see what's over here. So also new to this game, from older Zelda games. Oh, that's gonna be helpful. New to this game is this annoying music that plays every time you pick up a guardian acorn or a piece of power. That is a Moldorm. And we got 20 rupees. Joy! So new to this game is that every dungeon not only has a boss, but every dungeon also has a... It has a key item, a mini boss, and a big boss, which is called the Nightmare. Right here we have some anti-fairies. More gels. Anti-fairies can be killed with a weapon later on, but right now we can't hurt them. In addition, get these spiny needles to flip over with our shield, and then head down the stairs. We've got Goombas. I'll explain the Goombas in a second. But there's... Okay, so there's the dungeon item. The... Um, there's a dungeon item a mini-boss, a boss, and a stone beak. Hmm. This heart is flying. Dodge the blade traps, and... You've got the rock's feather. It feels like your body is a lot lighter. Rock's feather is a new item in the in this game, where you could actually jump. So now we can grab that, and any other items that happen to be flying in the air. The Goombas here are a reference to Mario, obviously. If you, you can kill them with your sword like this, but if you jump on them, if you jump on them, they'll always drop a heart. Always. And there's several more references to Mario in this game. But now we can actually jump over holes. That is not what I intended to do. Kill them. Okay, we lost our uh, Guardian Acorn finally, so we can actually listen to the nice music that's playing. And there is the tone that plays whenever there's a key in the room. So this chest has a key. see how many keys you have on your subscreen over on the left there beneath the se uh, seashells so we have two I'm not gonna deal with you this is a locked block it's like a locked door except it's a block in the room you've got the nightmares key now you can open the door to the nightmares lair in later Zelda games, this would become known as the Boss Key. In A Link to the Past, it was known as the Big Key, but it didn't necessarily open the door to the boss's room, rather than it opened uh, uh, the big door and the big chest. There are no big chests in this game. The only thing the Big Key is used for, or the Boss Key, 
is to destroy or um, is to open up the room to the boss's lair. These enemies, I do not know what they are called. I'll flash it up on the screen. But in order to kill them, you actually have to hit them in such a way that they all, all three of them, will show the same suit. And if you don't, they just start walking around again. Bit of a pain to deal with. But here, we found the stone beak. Let's find the owl statue that belongs to it. If I had talked to these things earlier, they would have said that the owl statue is trying to tell you something, but you can't hear it, understand it because it doesn't have a beak. Turn aside the spined ones with a shield. <laughs> this is referencing that room that had. Uh, the spike beetles in it. But this next room is the mini boss. Basically, super easy boss. All you gotta do is jump over his uh, spike spike log and hit him with your sword. Super easy boss. And then when he's dead, he will drop a fairy his log will disappear, and he'll spawn this portal. This portal leads you back to the first room of the dungeon. And there is the nightmare door. However, there's a staircase here. What this staircase is, is where you end up if you fall in the boss room. Boss room. Mrs. Blue's outsider is Moldorm. And you know how Moldorm goes. Hitting him on the tail will speed him up drastically for a little bit. not want to fall down the hole because it re will reset his health. Yes, yes, we've heard this already. This is a much smaller room than you usually fight Moldorm in. I think after a certain point, he stops... Oh, son of a bitch. Well, there's a death. Which means I'm not getting the good ending. It's not really much of an ending, to be honest. But, it would have been nice to show it. I'll probably... Mother... Okay, so Moldorm isn't exactly an easy boss. <laughs> easy boss. But I will finish this first dungeon before the end of this. Hitting him on the tail will speed him up significantly for a short while. After a moment, after a bit, however, after hitting him enough times, he will stop slowing down entirely. He will just continuously go ape on you. I do not know how many hits he takes. That'll flash up on screen as well. But he is much harder to actually hit than a Link to the Past Moldorm. Good grief! I don't remember Moldorm being this hard. I mean, I've died three times in the first dungeon. There. 
killed him. Ugh. And he will drop a heart container. You cannot do a zero heart run, or a three heart run of this game, due to the fact that the door will not open until you pick up the heart container. By coming through here, you've got the full moon cello. 